Hello and welcome to another Adobe Illustrator CS6 lesson uh, we call Text Art. Um, in this lesson, we are specifically going to be converting text to text outlines, and then we're going to convert it to an art brush, and then we're going to use those brushes to place on lines that we draw. So this is a finished version. Uh, we're going to start off with a File New, and for this project, we're going to choose uh, tabloid because this is the kind of thing that we make a poster of. It doesn't work so great small because the text gets too fine and too small to read and you'd like to read it so you want it to be pretty big. So uh, I'm just going to call it text art. I'm going to make sure that it's in a portrait view and there you go. You make one like that. But I've already got one made so I'm going to use one that I already have. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Google Images. Here at Don Ross, we use Google Chrome most of the time, but it doesn't really matter. Just choose images, and then you're going to look up your character. Now, when you get to the character, so I used Albert Einstein, but I'm going to put an HD behind it just because we're looking for a really nice, big, high quality picture. And then I'm going to go search. Now, when you place your mouse over, you can see the thumbnail shows you in Google Chrome uh, exactly how big it is. So that's a really nice, good size. That's a good size as well. All these are 1920 by 1200 pixels. So that's what you're looking for when you choose your subject. 1024 by 640, probably, you know, the smallest you want to go, if possible. You know, if you have to go smaller, you have to go smaller. Because, you know, the subject you chose might not be as famous as Albert Einstein. So, then, when you decide on a picture, you click on it. You go view image to get the actual large image. Then you're going to go right click, save image as, and you'd save it to your hard drive. Here at Don Ross Middle School, we want you to save it to your network space, then computers, and then Illustrator. But, well, I could just show you how you go save image as. You're going to hit the drop down arrow, or here at Don Ross, you would go to your network space, computers, illustrator, and then save it in there. You would go file, place. And that's how you place the picture. So I'm going to place Albert Einstein on there. Yeah, if I need to, I'll resize it. Probably if you get that HD one, you might have to downsize it, actually. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this layer. So when you lock the layer, all you have to do is go beside the eyeball. The eyeball is the toggle visibility switch. And you click in that opening, and then it locks it. So now, if I try and move it with the black arrow tool, it won't let me move it. Then, I'm going to add a new layer. So here, I'm going to call this lines, and I double click on the layer name, and I call this uh, picture. Then, when I'm getting ready to work, I'm going to work on the lines layer, because if I try and draw with a pen tool, which I'm going to ask you to do, it, you won't be able to do it if it comes up with this sign on the pen tools, because you're on the wrong layer. So get on the right layer and then you're ready to draw. Now, this part is probably going to be the part that takes the longest time. So I'm going to show you how I do this. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go click, click and drag, because that's a corner. See, there's a curved area. I'm going to click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Now, and this is not the best way to work. What you want to do is you want to work with no fill and color in the line. I'm actually, to start off with, I'll change them all later, but because I often use red when I'm drawing because it really stands out. I'll change them to black later. Um, but again, no fill here and red on the line. So to change the line color, this has to be in front. Change the fill color, that has to be in front. But we're going here. And then I'm just going to continue to draw around. Now, 
What I'm not going to do is draw the entire way around and connect it. Normally when I'm drawing, I would do that because you want to be able to fill it in. But here, we're going to run text along that line. And if you go all the way around, at least half of your text has to be upside down. And that is no good. So I'm going to stop. Now, here's an interesting thing. You can't see it on my screen, but I'm going to click the P key. And then I'm going to start just a little ways away from it. And it allows me to start a new line. And I'll start stop just before we finish. So when I'm moving, it's always click, click and drag along the main parts of the curves. And you kind of drag in the direction that you're going. So you kind of want to think of it as a tangent off of a circle if you're going over a curve. All right, then I'll press the P key again and I'll go click, click and drag, click, P key, click, click and drag, click. P key, click, click and drag, click, P key. And you'll just carry on with that. Even the eyes, I'm going to go click, click and drag. That was a poorly done one. So I'm going to, I just hit Control Z to make a mistake. Anytime I make a mistake, just go Control Z, click and drag, click. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Starting a new line with a P key. The hair is going to look kind of like this. Click. And drag, click and drag, click and drag, click, peaky, and so on and so forth until eventually I end up looking like this. So I'm just going to zoom in by hitting Control Plus, and you can see all the lines I've put on. Um, this might, you might even consider this a bit overkill, like maybe too many lines. Because if you look at my finished product, uh, some of it's a bit hard to read because the lines are so close together. So maybe try and do a few less lines than what I did. Just make your life a little easier. So that's kind of a finished project. So probably going to want to hit pause on the movie now and finish this section. And then come back and listen to more on how to do, uh, how to add text. All right, now that you've finished your layer and you've turned it off, one of the things I really recommend is that you grab layer two and drag it onto the new layer icon to duplicate the layer. And turn one off. You'll notice I've got a layer here. You're not gonna have this yet. This is my finished version already. But now I'm gonna show you how I do it, okay? The next step is go to Google and in Google, I'm going to put Einstein quotes, something like that. And then I'm going to go find, I didn't like this brainy quote because it's on a picture and you can't copy and paste. So I'm going to go to a different one. Um, and there you got one, okay? Imagination is more important than knowledge. So I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to go control C. Then I'm going to go to my illustrator and I'm going to move off to the side and I'm going to grab a text box and I need to be on the correct layer and I want to grab make nice long text boxes and I'm going to go control V. Okay. Then I'll do that with, say, 10 more. It's really up to you on how many you do, but I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to make you watch that. So it's pretty simple how you do that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double check that my spelling is correct. Because once we create it, make text outlines with it, you cannot go back and change the text. You'd have to do it over again, although it's not that hard. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my text. And I like using the character, um, sorry, the type here and font better because instead of using the character palette, it doesn't really show you what it looks like. So now I could choose, you know, something like this. And there we go. There's a font that I can use, but it's really up to you. So let's say I choose this font. 
but I would do it from type because when you show font, you can see what the font looks like. So it's a lot faster because um, you can kind of pick because there's so many fonts to choose from that it can be a little tedious deciding on what you want. All right. Now, once you've done that with your, say, 10 or fonts, oh, by the way, use some single words as well. Because it's really nice when you've got short lines to use some single words. So, so, you know, I at E is equal to MC squared, a popular formula, imagination, things like that. So anyways, there, the next thing we've got to do is we've got to change this to a drawing object from a font. So it's a font right now, and I go type and create outlines. That makes it a drawing font. Now, then what I do is I go over here to my brushes palette, and you'll notice I have a whole bunch of brushes already in there. Okay? What I do to do that is I drag this into the brushes palette, and I make it an art brush. This is crucial for it to look good. You make it an art brush. And you say, okay. Now, I never delete these fonts, these text boxes, or text outlines, because later on at the end, I might decide that I want one as a different color. And you cannot change these colors. So that's why I want to keep them all in case I want to later go like this and decide that I want a yellow one. And then if I drag that into my brushes, then I'll have a yellow one. But I kind of do that at the end, just in case, because I, I kind of do them all in black at first, and then you can change them to a different color if you want to. But that's up to you. All right. Now, what do you do for this? You see a line, you select it, and you click on it. Now, if I zoom into this one, you'll notice that it's upside down. So to change that and fix that, you have to go to this, which is kind of your options of selected object. So that's your options for brushes. And you can flip along, and I usually choose the preview, and flip across. There you go. Now, the next thing you can do is change the thickness of you know how big it is and this is just a line on his forehead so you don't want it to be super thick all right and that is how you put brushes on the only other thing i wanted to show you how to do this is using the width tool now you can modify this by making it fatter in the middle and skinnier on the ends if you want to using the width tool so you take the width tool find a point and you just drag. And that way you can get a brush that looks like that. So the ways of modifying your lines are, just a quick review here, click on a line, pick a brush, go to your options palette. You can flip it along, flip across if you want, but this one doesn't need to be. And I can change the thickness of it if I want, this way or this way. Okay. And then with the width tool, you can change the thickness in the middle. So that is how you do text art uh, using art brushes in Adobe Illustrator CS6. And Let's take a look at my layer palette again. And I'm going to turn this one off and we're going to look at the finished version of Albert Einstein. So I did put a few colors. I don't think they actually look better. I think they look worse in this situation. But I did put a few colors in just to show you that you can do it. I also did do one as a box here, and you can see it doesn't look good as a box because these letters are all upside down. So that's why I don't complete objects. And you can see on this one, for example, I fin started and finished here and started and finished there. So you got to be careful when it has a full object. Adobe Illustrator CS6, text art using art brushes. Thanks for watching.